What's up guys, Jeremy here with the Hockey Movement with special guest star Jim Vitale from Vital Hockey Skills. Uh, he's been coaching for forever. How long have you been coaching? Uh, 25 years. 25 years, and uh, give him a breakdown of where you coached. Quite a few teams in the GTHL, AAA level, a little bit with York University men's varsity team, and uh, a stint with the uh, Vaughn Vipers in the uh, Provincial Junior League here in Toronto. He's been running hockey camps in the city for 20 plus years, and recently just took a uh, minor midget AAA team to the OHL Cup and nine players drafted in the OHL. Yeah, it was a real uh, real special team and took uh, eight years in that age group to kind of weed everybody out and put the right mix of guys together to be able to accomplish that. And we're uh, really proud of it, all the guys. So I've been working with Jim for a few years uh, at his hockey camp and I can tell you he knows a lot about skating and that is why I wanted to get him on the channel so he can pass on that awesome knowledge that he's only offering to uh, you know kids in Toronto, but now you guys can all learn from Jim as well. You might be wondering how are we gonna work on skating when we're in Jim's basement? Well, Jim's been set up with the Hockey Shot Synthetic Ice, so he's going to run through some skating drills, and then you guys can use those on the ice if you'd like. So, uh, Jim, what are we going to go through in this video? Well, I think in this video, you know, we'll look, take a look at stride. I mean, a lot of people uh, have different ways of coaching it, different ways of teaching it. I believe that a stride should be more horizontal. I always tell the kids when I coach them, you want to be an airplane, not a helicopter. So, which means that you want your legs going side to side, and not back. I do see uh, quite a few coaches teaching pushing back. What I find is that when you're teaching pushing back and not pushing sideways, you're really minimizing the amount of time that the blade contacts with the ice. Mm -hmm. And you know that the amount of time that your blade contacts the ice equals force from the ice coming back to your body, which propels you down the ice. All right, you guys ready to learn about the stride? Let's hit the synthetic ice. The purpose of a hockey stride is obviously to get down the ice as quick as possible. Most people, have difficulty with their stride in either not extending it fully or not recovering fully. And all of it has to do with force transfer from the hip all the way down to the ankle and at some point there being a disruption in that process. In other words, the more efficient you are at transferring your muscle contraction from your hip all the way down into your ankle, the better your stride is going to be. So what type of things disrupt that? Well. First of all, joint angle of your hip. So if you're in a squat and you're ready to push, if you're not in a full squat, what that leaves is your hip unlocked. So in the case of a stride, if your hip is unlocked, you are allowing for your leg to go backwards. So when you're pushing backwards, what that's making is pressure starting on your toe. If it starts on your toe, it means you're only pushing with about a quarter of your blade and you're going to be done your stride faster than you'd want. So what you want to do is start your stride from the middle to the back of your blade. That way you're getting a chance to make proper contact with the ice and able to transmit that force from your heel, again, down your ankle. When you're down in a proper stride posture, 90 degree angle is too much. There's no one that could skate that way. There's no physical way to keep that going. What that does is it locks your legs into a contraction that basically makes your legs immobile. So here you are trying to contract as much as possible, but you're causing immobility or proper firing when it's actually time to push off. There is an optimal range from 90 degree, again, 180 degrees is inefficient, 90 is inefficient, somewhere in between where you can just start feeling the tightness of the initial contraction is where you want to be. And that's different for every player as we all have different body types. But you'll know when you achieve it because when you are in the right place, your hip angle is locked. And what that does is it really gives your leg the only option to push sideways and extend pretty much horizontal. So you're starting with your weight distribution at the back of your, your skates. From the back of your heel, a little bit shifted toward the middle, you start the push and you push off. Now as you're extending your leg, what's going to happen is a natural rockering toward the toe and that's the key. Just like a baseball throw, a baseball throw wouldn't be efficient if you didn't finish the transfer with a, th with a snap at the end. A stride is not the most efficient unless you finish with a snap at the end. So what does that snap look like? Well. You ever uh, accidentally squished a bug or driven a go-kart or if you drive a car and you're pushing down on a gas pedal? Well, that's basically the movement 
for toe snap, but instead of going up and down, it's happening sideways. So it's coming that way. It's a sweeping motion that way. A lot of top NHL players do a lot of toe raises, right? When they're on their running shoes to develop calf muscles for efficient transfer at the end. So as you start to transfer, believe it or not, without even realizing you're pushing, you're actually shifting your weight from one leg onto the other. So it's a small movement from your hip that goes from one leg onto the other. And that's what starts the stride push. So you're involving your hips first, and then you're at the point now where you better do something with your knee joint. So that's where you start to extend your knee joint and push out. So we'll look at that again. You're going hip transfer, knee joint, and notice the ankle hasn't taken place yet. Snap of the ankle. Let's do it one more time. Hip in the right skating posture, shift the weight over, push the knee out, toe snap. So again, you're down in your skating posture and you're not totally 90 degrees, you're not 180, you're down somewhere making close to a 90 degree angle. Your back is straight, your chin is up. I like to call it head top suspended. It's a yoga term, believe it or not, where you relax the shoulders and it's as if your head is tied to the ceiling and everything's loose, but your chin is up. And you start the push with a simple movement of your hips, you're shifting over. It's right there from one hip to the other. So your legs haven't even really been activated yet. It's just a swing on to the non-pushing leg. So as you swing over, now you've put your uh, leg in the proper situation to activate and fire the quad muscle, which is gonna extend your knee. And now in that situation, you're ready to snap the toe. Once the force travels from your hip down the quad, through the knee, it's at your calf, where at that point you need to fire a toe point motion and your calf will contract and you'll get that toe snap. And you should hear a crunch right at the end. So it should sound like a whip and then a crunch if you're doing it properly on the ice. So lots of good info there on the forward stride. What do you think is the most important thing for like the true beginner players? Uh, is it their edges? Is it balance? Is it just getting out there? Yeah, I think it's just a matter of realizing that to go forward, you really have to go side to side. And that's the hardest thing, because most people you watch, you go to public skating, like I've gone a few times, and I like to study them, to see yeah. what they do first, yeah. right? And you see a lot of people, and they think that they're just pushing backwards. Like, mm -hmm. to move forward, I need to push backwards, because that's what we do when we walk. So you have years of walking, and you're trying to tell your body to transfer that into a side to side motion that it recognizes as completely unnatural. That's a very good point. Definitely notice that they do a walking motion and they use their blades in a straight down the ice motion. So, so their blade is actually just slipping on the ice and never actually turn and use their edges. And I think that's something that really helps get that speed. When you're pushing to the side, you're using that full edge, right? Whereas if you're pushing back, you can lose some of that, especially if you don't angle your foot. And what you see with some of the, um, I guess the public skaters is, is running on the ice, right? They, they, you can move your feet as fast as you want but the, the, it's like the t tires are spinning. I think a treadmill is kind of a good example as to why you should push to the side. Uh, basically, once you get your speed up, you could imagine the ice is moving underneath you. And if you touch your foot down and push back when you already have that speed, basically all that's happening is like when you crank a treadmill up to the highest setting, right when you drop your foot, it fires behind you. Right. And you can't produce that force anymore. In skating, you can because you have the blade and you can dig it into the ice. And as you're pushing to the side, like you said, your, your blade is in contact with the ice for a longer period of time and it gives you more time to generate power, right? Well, that, yeah, and that's the thing, like your leg, your legs are already coming behind your body anyways because you are moving forward. Mm -hmm. So the thing is like if you're already pushing backwards, not only are your legs going behind you like frog legs as your body goes forward, but you got no time with your blade on the ice. So if you push sideways, your legs are kind of going side and around, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because the force of the ice or your movement forward is bringing it back. And I think that's why some people might push for the, you know, push behind, because if they watch a video, the leg ends up back there. Right. Well, it was pushing to the side the whole time, but because of the force of the ice and the, and the motion, it ends up more behind. In terms of learning how to skate, you need to be able to extend the leg. You need to get your hip joint uh, in the position where it can only produce force 
and not waste force by kicking the leg up. Because remember, it's not just about what force you're producing, it's about the recovery as well. And if you're not putting your leg out there in a way that it can efficiently come back under the body, it's like playing pool and just worrying about getting the ball into the hole without worrying about where the white ball goes next. Mm-hmm. You gotta line up your next shot. Right. You gotta line up your next strike. So lots of great info there. The great thing about video is you can watch it over and over and over. Some of this stuff, you might have to watch it a few times before it really sinks in. So I definitely encourage that. So head it on the ice, test some of this stuff out. Let me know in the comments if it helps. And uh, don't forget to tune in the next video. We're gonna be talking about turning. So thank you, Jim, for being on the channel. Yeah, thanks for having me out. Hey, my pleasure. It's great to get this type of knowledge out there online so these guys can learn at home. If you guys are looking for the synthetic ice, I'll put a link in the video description where you can pick it up. Uh, Hit that subscribe button because I make new hockey videos every single week. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.